Is the screen visible to you all? Can you see the screen? Yes? Okay. So we had started with the discussion of the chapter on the face of it. As I've just discussed, this chapter, it emphasizes that how in life, we give so much importance to physical beauty, to external appearances. And we feel that don't look a certain way if uh, we are not like, uh, you know, a certain appearance. So people will not accept us, society will not accept us, right? And it seems as if this world is made only for beautiful things. And things that are not beautiful cannot find a place in it. There's one thing very nice that Mr. Lamb says, right? You remember the story? Mr. Lamb and Derek, there are two characters. Mr. Lamb is a old man. He has a, a, a big house with a garden. He lives, right? He spends time with his, uh, you know, like the flowers and uh, things here. And uh, okay, he's still joining. So he spends time uh, with nature. And with the past time, he has started finding happiness in the things that people find, you know, like what different or unacceptable. Like he talks about when he looks at his garden, there are a lot of weeds. And he has purposely let those weeds grow because he feels that nature has created everything on this earth, right? It's not differentiated. And if uh, something is here on this earth, that means it has a place to exist. It has a right to exist. So we don't have the right that because it does not look nice, because it does not look pretty, let's remove it, let's take it out, right? So the weeds, he says, let's us appreciate the weeds along with the flowers. We appreciate the flowers. What do we do with the weeds? We remove them. So life is not about beauty only. Life is about so many things. And beauty, is, as you say, what happens to the bloom? It looks so beautiful. And after some days, it will wither away. And the flowers, they come for a season. And after that, yes, it's so like they fall, they wither. And in changes, we have new blooms, we have new flowers, we have new plants. So this is one very important message that he gives to Derek. And Derek is a young boy. He has a burnt face. As it fell on his face, his face was burnt. This uh, an in, you know, like a mark, a burnt mark on his face. And it looks uh, right, uh, like uh, makes his appearance a little different. But what has he thought now? What thought has come to his mind is that because I look different, society is never ever going to accept me. So he avoids people because when he is with people, when he is among the crowd, he notices people staring at him, he notices people talking about him. He feels uncomfortable, so he thinks it is better, let me stay away from the people and let me not interact with them. So this is why, so he just saw this garden, he saw that it was, uh, you know, like uh, lots of weeds were there and uh, the windows of the house uh, did not have any curtains. It seemed as if the house was unoccupied. So he came here by climbing the wall. But to his surprise, whom did he see? He saw an old man with a tin leg. That was Mr. Nam. And he said that if he had known that he lived over here, he would never have come to this house, okay? Because he avoids people, he stays away from them. Mr. Lamb is a very positive person. He says that if I have a tin leg, that does not mean I stop enjoying life. I stop appreciating the beauty that is there in life. Okay? So it is about our perspective. It is the way you take life, the way you think about it. Right? And then, of course, as we were reading now, what does Mr. Lamb like to do? He has, uh, you know, these apple trees and he plucks those apples, he makes jam out of them, he makes jelly, and he has the bees which he takes care of. And he says there are so many things in life, a spider spinning a web, all these things that he notices and which give him happiness and pleasure. He says the boys come over here, they steal the 
apples, they spoil the garden, but he does not mind. And never stops anyone from coming inside his garden. That is why Derek is there. Okay? And then he talks about beauty and the beast. It is our thinking. Beauty did not find an ugliness in the beast. Rather, she made him a better person. Right? And it is relative. We think for us, you know, for someone, something might be beautiful for another person. It might not be. But let us not conform to very rigid norms. Let us be a little flexible in our way of thinking, in our way of understanding what is going on in the world around us. Let us change our outlook. Let us change our perspective towards life. This is one of the most important messages that the chapter conveys. Okay? Right. So we've heard about the story of beauty and the beast. Have we? Yes. You needn't think they haven't all told me that fairy story before. It's not what you look like, it's what you are inside. Handsome is as handsome does. Beauty loved the monstrous beast for himself, and when she kissed him, he changed into a handsome prince. Only he wouldn't. He would have stayed a monstrous beast. I want to change. So you're being to change the beast, right? Because she saw the goodness in him. But I will not change. I will always remain a beast. Why does that answer that? That I will always be like this. I'll have a burnt face. People will stare at me. People will look at me. In that way, no, you won't. And no one will kiss me ever. Only my mother. And she kisses me on the other side of my face. And I don't like my mother to kiss me. She does it because she has to. Why should I like that? Care if nobody appears. And he says that, uh, like Mr. Lamb says, that, no, you will not remain a beast like this. There will be uh, something in your life, or something will happen that will change your approach. And right? Mr. Lamb is there to change his thinking about life. And he says that, yes, sir, I will I have noticed that even my mother, you know, when she kisses me, it is not on the burnt side of my face, it is on the side which is not burnt. And he says she doesn't have to. She doesn't have to show her affection in such a way. Ah, oh, but you do care if you never kiss them. What? Girls, pretty girls, long hair and large eyes. People you love. Who would let me? Not one. So no one is going to love me. No one is going to let me be a part of their lives because of the way I look. Because I have a burnt face. Who can tell? I won't ever look different. When I'm as old as you, I look the same. I still only have half a face. He says, when I'm as old as you, even then, I will have a burnt face. Nothing is going to change. My appearance is not going to change. The world is going to stare at me. The world is going to look at me. So you will. But the world won't see. I will still only have half a face. What has happened to his other half? Right? Once again, you know, you're the very perfect example. Of course, you have a glass half filled with water. Some say it's empty and some say it is full. Right? It's about perspective. You have a good face. You might have changed right here that, of course, you are scared about your parents. You have these worries and concerns. But the world around you has not changed. The world is the same. There is as much beauty as it in it was before. So why are you changing yourself? Right? Here he says, so you will, but the world won't. The world's got the whole face and the world's there to be looked at. Why do we start avoiding people? Why do we start thinking negatively? Why do you think, oh my God, what has happened to my life? Right? One incident should not change your approach to life. Let us be positive. Let us face life. Right? Because the world has not changed. Things around us have not changed. So why should you? And why should you think? Because you are looking different. The world is going to treat you in a different way. So if you're not bold enough, you're not ready to face the world, the world is already there to pull you down. So it's up to you to get that courage to stand up, to face the worries, to face the problems. Okay? 
right do you think this is the world this old garden you stay here for you this world is this garden only when i am here not to the only one but the world as much as anywhere for me this is the world when i am here this is my world this garden this house the apples the bees this is my world does it like hurt you tin doesn't hurt a boy mr lamb has a tin leg and daddy says you can cover your leg with trousers you can not going to stare at your tin leg i can't cover my face i can't change my face people will stare at my face when it came off did it was it hurt when it came off certainly and now i mean where the tin stops at the top now and then in wet weather it doesn't signify oh that's something else they all say look at all those people who are in pain and brave and never cry and never complain and don't feel sorry for themselves right so he says now just see this is what people tell me right hum log kaise ek dusre ko you know comfort karte hain are zyada bhi ho sakta tha zyada chot bhi lag sakti thi you could have lost an arm or leg or something chalo right we we always try to see the positive side of it that there wasn't a major injury there wasn't a major problem and this is what people tell him he your face is there but rest at least you can walk you can run why don't we see the positive thing things that we are able to do having a burnt face does not stop you from functioning normally you're healthy you are there brave enough to face the world right that is look at all those people who are in pain and brave and never cry and never complain and don't feel sorry for themselves this is what people say ki aas paas dekho kitne log pareshan hain kitni unko problems hain i mean people are lucky i have said it and think of all those people worse off than you think you might have been blinded you were saved as pare face pe thoda sa cheeks pe gir gaya so i was saved you didn't turn blind or you were not born deaf or have to live in a wheelchair or be deaf in your head and dribble ki hum log aur problems ke sath apne aap ko compare karte ki isse bhi bura ho sakta tha right am i clear but yeah we, we never address the problem in hand and this is make these comparisons people talk about even things that could have happened to me and say that see it's only a burnt face right be daft in your head and dribble means that you not grown properly you have not grown mentally you're not a healthy person okay right dribble not talking properly not having control over yourself and that's all true I mean, you know what? Of course, it's the truth. Things could have been worse. It won't make my face change. So he's just thinking about one thing. He wants his face to look better. He wants to be accepted by society, and he's running away because he does not want people to stare at his burnt face. Do you know? One day, a woman went by me in the street. I was at a bus stop, and she was with another woman. and she looked at me and she said whispered only i heard her she said look at that that's a terrible thing that's a face only a mother could know so she like was there standing at the bus stop she said to me you were saying she was with another lady i could hear what she said look at that face only a mother can know it and actually mother is never ever going to you know let go of her child no matter what happens yeah right so the mother is going to take care of the child in whatever circumstances whatever conditions the child is in and she said what did we hear that only mother can love that's a face so mother will love a child with burnt face so that is true so you believe everything you hear then it was cruel so why do you listen to everything why do you have to believe what people say maybe not meant as such just something said between them so maybe they didn't say to me directly they were talking you know between them 
uh, this uh, whispering was there or they're telling each other, only I heard it, I heard. And is that the only thing you ever heard anyone say in your life? Is that the only thing? People must be saying so many things. Oh no, I heard a lot of things. So now keep your ears up. Don't listen to what people have to say. That's the best policy in life, you know. We keep on worrying what people are going to say. We keep on worrying what people are going to think. You will never ever be happy in life. So it's time to start thinking about yourself. It's worrying less what the world thinks. Right? It's one life that we have been blessed with. And if in this life only we keep on thinking about others, then it's such a waste. Right? So here he says that, see, you, if this is your life. Why are you letting others decide? Right? If you want to be happy, no one can take away your happiness. If you want to do something, why not? If you want to be a part of society, no one can stop you. Right? And yes, if people have a problem, let it be. They look at you, they stare at you once, twice, how many times? Then you get used to it. Right? But if you are avoiding people, if you don't want them to see you, then yes, then you're creating problems for yourself. Let us not run away from your problem. Let's learn to face it. Okay? Right. Your peculiar, you say peculiar things. You ask questions I don't understand. Now, Denny, maybe this is the first time here he's talking to someone and someone's giving him such important, you can say, approach towards life. Such a beautiful approach he's giving. So many positive things he's telling. Even strange, look at the way he talk. And the rest of the world is so different. The people I have come across are so different. And we know that one person is enough to bring about change. You listen to someone, someone is there giving you a positive message, someone is there giving you, you know, uh, like what uh, some motivation. That is more than enough. Right? So one person can bring so many changes in your life. I like to talk. I have a company, you don't have to answer questions. You don't have to stop here at all. It's open. So he says, I like to have people come here. I like to talk to them. I like to ask questions. I love to get answers also. But here, you don't have to stop. The gate's open. We didn't know when you came that the gate is open. But now, yes, the gate is open. And you can leave if you want. Yes, but... So Terry was just want to leave. He likes it. What the man is saying. I have a hive of bees behind those trees over there. Some hear bees and they say bees buzz. Yeah, what sound do bees make? It's a buzzing sound. And for some people it might be a very annoying sound. But when you listen to bees for a long while, they hum. And this hum means sing. Singing my bees. So, right, it says, yeah, when you listen to bees, they make a buzzing sound. But when you listen to them for a long while, you realize in that buzzing, you can hear a hum. So, it's like that you hum a song, right? And humming means singing. So, for me, the bees, they sing. But I like it here. I came in because I liked it when I looked over the wall. If you'd see me, you would not have come in. No, no. It would have been pressing. I didn't know you were here. That is why I came. If you were here, I would never have entered. That means I would be entering somebody's property without their permission. That is trespassing. That is something wrong to do. That is punishable also. It's not acceptable to enter someone's private property. Ah, but that's not why. I don't like being near people when they stare, when I see them being afraid of me. So I don't like being near people. And when I look at them and they're afraid of me, I, I, I don't like it. It does not make me feel comfortable. You could lock yourself up in a room and never leave it. 
There was a man who did that. That's a very nice example he has given. You keep on thinking, you know, you're scared of facing the world. What if somebody says something? What if someone laughs at me? What if I meet an accident? What if I get infection? What if I have a problem? I keep on worrying, worrying, and what? There was a man who did that. He was afraid, you see, of everything. Everything in this world. A bus might run him over. He thought, if I go out, bus might run him over. Maybe the bus will die. Or a man might breathe deadly germs into him. Nowadays, we're very scared of catching the germs, right? That is why we're at home. And these germs, you know, they might affect him. Or a donkey might kick him to death. He'll be walking on the road. He might, uh, you know, come across a donkey and the donkey will kick him. A lightning might strike him down. The storm, we are afraid of God, lightning striking. Or he might love a girl and the girl will leave him. Heartbreak. And he might slip on a banana skin and fall. And people who saw him, would laugh their heads off. So this man, he had so many negative thoughts in his mind. Ye ho jayega, wo ho jayega. No, so what did he decide? Do I stay inside as long as I am at home? I am safe. But see what happened. So he went into his room and locked the door and got into his bed and stayed there. My God, pity. Who could have put me on? Forever, for a while. Then what? A picture fell off the wall onto his bed and killed him. A picture fell on his head and he died. He's afraid of stepping out. He's wondering, oh my God, kya ho jayega mujhe, kya ho sakta hai. But what happened was that even in the safety of his home, he got hurt and he died in that place which he thought was the most safe secure place. Anything can happen to you anywhere, right? You, you might uh, fall ill at home also. You, you can catch the germs, you can catch infections there also, right? You might sleep on a banana peel at home, right? You can fall, accidents can happen at home also, when you, where you think you are safe. But this man did not step outside, but ironically, he was at home only. A picture fell on his head and he died. Derry laughs a lot. You see, but you still say peculiar things. Peculiar to some. So why does Derry again and again keep on saying that you 